Today we are getting debunked. Since we are one of the best YouTube channels ever. Debunked. Okay, since we are like a YouTube channel. Red right Light 2 of the hottest men. Debunked. Are we not hot? <laughs> <laughs> so last year we made a video called the only anti-aging cream that works according to science and we're immediately shown a video by the incredible Lab Muffin that explains some of the things that we got wrong about the complexity of beauty products. So we decided to fly during a global pandemic to Australia to visit Lab Muffin because famously YouTubers can't get or spread COVID. Debunk. True, I guess we'll just stay home and Zoom with her because that's actually really easy and everyone should be doing that. <laughs> it's cheaper. Michelle, hi, aka Lab Muffin, hi. hi. Michelle, can you give us a background on who you are? I have a PhD in chemistry and I've got a background in science education. I've been making videos and blogging about the science behind beauty products since 2011. And I do it so hopefully people who don't have a background in science understand it. Sort of like what you guys do, but for beauty. Be honest, when you saw our video, were you annoyed? I I wasn't annoyed, I'm sorry if it <laughs> felt like I was coming for you. Um, I was actually really excited because it is so rare that anyone makes a whole video about skincare like from a science perspective. So one of the best parts of being YouTubers, I think, is that you get real-time feedback on what you're doing. And in the past, we have definitely had to fix like biological pathways, drawings we've made mistakes yeah, before. Yeah, or even like the periodic table we've updated because yes. there was new information that came in for it. And we also once said that it took eight seconds for sun to get to earth and it's eight minutes, <laughs> things like that. But with you, this was like a full video. So what we thought we could do today is go through our video and you're going to explain the parts that we got wrong. Ding. So we're gonna sit down with my partner, Mitch, cause he doesn't really know or use skin creams to see if he can actually pick and choose which ones are more effective and teach you how to actually read the ingredients lists of these beauty products to understand from a scientific perspective, which ones work. So the very idea of this game is flawed, some might say, correct? Yeah, there is a bit of a problem with it. In most countries, products have to have an ingredient list and it's listed in order of decrease in concentration. It's tempting to look at how high an ingredient is on the list to see if you have more of an ingredient, more is usually better. But while you have to have enough of an ingredient for it to work, you can also have too much of an ingredient and that's when you start to see side effects. Skincare ingredients are often irritating if you have too much, so more is not always better. Another problem with focusing on the ingredients list is that it only really tells you how much of an ingredient you have at the start. Some ingredients like retinol and vitamin C are unstable, so for example 1% retinol products from different brands can end up containing very different amounts of retinol by the time it gets to you. So if you have a product with a high concentration of of inactive but it has a pretty crappy delivery system, that might not work as well as a product that has a lower concentration but a better delivery system. So you can think of formulation like a chocolate cake. Technically, the final chocolate cake and a bag of chocolate cake ingredients would have the same ingredient list, but when you use them in your mouth, it gives you two very different experiences. Is it just something that you just navigate by doing a lot of research before you buy a product? Because if you are just showing up there looking at the ingredients list and reading what's on the bottle, it's gonna be confusing because they're trying to get you to, to buy it. If you're trying to go for a medicine, you want a medicine that's been proven in clinical trials. In skincare, because that doesn't actually exist, you kind of have to try to grab anecdotal evidence. So look at reviews, look at the ingredients list, look at what's on the label and put it all together to try to make a good decision. As somebody who's never really done that much skincare. Like, honestly, I, I don't really wash my face that often. <laughs> Is it to my detriment that I'm not thinking about it that much? Honestly, I think if you're happy with your skin, don't bother. Um, <laughs> you're half brown, you'll probably age beautifully. <laughs> It's me you gotta worry about. <laughs> Antioxidants are something that are claimed on a lot of products that people are buying. There is not a scientific consensus that antioxidants will help with anti-aging. In your video, you talk about how this was misleading, but personally, I had read those studies that you talk about in your video. Stimulation of collagen biosynthesis by topically applied vitamin C. Double blind slash half face study comparing topical vitamin C and vehicle for rejuvenation of photo damage. And when I read these studies, I didn't comfortably think I could say there was a scientific consensus behind them because the sample sizes were so small it was 10 people in each study. The big problem with skincare is that there just isn't that much funding for it so we kind of have to take these studies and look at it with a grain of salt. Generally there are small sample sizes 
in skincare studies compared to pharmaceuticals, for example. So for skincare, we kind of have to lower our expectations and do a bit of educated guesswork. 10 people with a relatively objective measure like a biopsy is generally decent as far as skincare studies go. Vitamin C is regulated as a quasi drug in Japan, which means there's enough evidence that it does something. In this case, it's a pigment fading quasi drug. So the reason it's such small sample sizes is because it's not like a top medical priority to have glowing, beautiful <laughs> skin. A lot of things that claim collagen will help with wrinkles, but the molecule itself is too large to actually go through your epidermis, what we were talking about earlier, the keratinocytes. It does not get through, so anything with collagen, do not ever buy. Collagen is a very overrated ingredient, but I wouldn't say 100% BS. I'd probably put it back down to maybe 90% BS. Most of the time it is in there to tell a good story. Like you said, it's too big to get into skin, but even even though it's too big, it is really good at acting as a humectant. So humectants are ingredients that grab onto water and keep it on your skin. Keeping it hydrated can do a lot of good. So it can reduce the appearance of wrinkles, it can help it act as a good barrier against irritants. Collagen does tend to make the product a little bit more expensive. It's really glycerin that's usually doing the heavy lifting there. Retinol and retinoic acid is what we're going to talk about right now because it is the only face cream for anti-aging that there is a scientific consistency census about. Especially in Western marketing, the idea of wrinkles is really, I guess, etched into our brains. But in a lot of other countries with different skin types, aging isn't just about wrinkles. So for example, white skin, you start getting wrinkles late 20s, early 30s. With Asian skin, it's a lot later, so I think it's something like 40s and 50s. I guess the signs of aging, the anti-aging products, really are targeting things like pigmentation. That's probably the biggest thing for Asians. I've definitely got some hidden under there. Um, yeah, uneven pigment and age spots are a much bigger thing because obviously we have a lot more ability to produce pigment. So my mom is like, half South Asian, like from India. Obviously I have like slightly tan skin. And I've thought about how darker skin protects you from the sun, but I've never really been like, and that is why darker skin doesn't wrinkle or age in that way as early. Yeah, so I guess it's where the saying black don't crack comes from. So many of the science studies that I'm reading, they're focusing on wrinkles and they have moments where they talk about the science of why different skin tones don't age, or sorry, there, I just said it. <laughs> don't get wrinkles the same way white people do. And then they just move on and go back to talking about wrinkles. It just shows you how like Eurocentric and white science is. There was like a big thing about manifestations of COVID in dark skin. There are a lot of dermatologists pointing out that a lot of the pictures of COVID manifestations on skin, it was like 90% white skin and there were like a few pictures of darker skin. And so it was actually a lot harder to diagnose and fix those issues. Question, should we take our original video down? I don't think so. I think it is really good to have people see how conversations go because I think there is a lot of pressure on scientists, especially in 2020, 2021, that science is just this perfect monolith that doesn't change. And I think that's really damaging. Okay, thank you so much for educating us, for coming on and for your video. Where can people find you slash subscribe to your channels? Chef's kiss amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, so my channel is Lab Muffin Beauty Science and I am also on Instagram. I started on TikTok, but I don't know what I'm doing and on Twitter <laughs> as well. So it's Lab Muffin Beauty Science or Lab Muffin, depending on how many letters I'm allowed.